I love the water. I've grown up on it, lived on boats from a young age. I now own and operate my own charter business in Southeast Alaska, as well as Captain Boats. I think it gets in your blood. Once it gets in your blood, um, that's it. In the winter of 1996, Ben Swanson was off the water working as a mechanic when he suffered a serious burn injury. I was repairing a car in my own garage and a gas can ignited and blew up and burned me 47% hands, legs and face. At first, Ben didn't know how badly he was burned. I remember the conversation the whole way and kind of thought that I would just get an ice pack and go home the next day, as did my roommate. After the fireman came and put the fire out, he asked, he said, can I go inside now? And they asked for what? And he said, well, I want to get Ben a change of clothes for when he comes home tomorrow. And the fireman responded, your friend's not coming home. Ben was taken to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. His wife, Jamie, then girlfriend, came to his room. When I first saw him, he was all bandaged up and everything already. His hands were covered, his face was covered, everything was covered. It was kind of scary because you didn't, you know, you didn't know the extent of it until you actually saw him. Harborview Medical Center in Seattle is a burn injury model system site funded by the National Institute on Disability and Rehabilitation Research. The interdisciplinary staff conducts research and works with patients through their entire recovery. You can imagine how you feel when all of a sudden you are faced with extraordinary pain. You don't know what the next step is going to be. The doctors, such as myself, come into your room and say, well, we're going to watch and see how your wounds heal, and we might operate, we might not. You're going to be in the hospital for one day for every percent burn. So if you have a 50% burn, you might be in the hospital for two months. Over the years, I've probably had uh, nearly 30 surgeries. Um, there, was, there was about 17 before I left the hospital originally. I know Ben quite well. I remember when he actually arrived at the burn center with his injury. Anytime when we have a patient that has burns to their face, that, that sort of, for me, is scary because it's going to be a lot of work because a lot of issues can be attached to that kind of a visible uh, uh, burn. So we got this guy in Sabina Brick is one of the few specialists in the country who work to get burn patients back into the workforce. I am in a position that I can give them an idea how long it's going to take them to go back to work. Having that time frame is very important for the patient. They can inform the employer how long they're going to be out of work. We are able to tell the patient that, yes, you had an injury, but you are not sick. We want you to be active. Important steps are to understand the job, whether it's a very physical job, a more a sedentary job, requiring more cognitive skills or uh, physical skills that we look at the job the individual is going back to, and then match that to where the person is at the time. Research suggests that on average, most patients are able to get back to work in about three months after their injury. It may be in a different job, it may involve retraining, or it may be actually be back to their previous job. The Burn Center staff understands that every patient, every injury, every job is different. Oftentimes we suggest a patient return to work maybe sooner than they would anticipate. And what our research shows is the sooner a person can return to work, the better their quality of life. It's one of the major, uh, major steps of getting their life back again and returning to a sense of normalcy. A few weeks after he left the hospital, Ben returned to work as a ship captain and crewman. But like many burn patients, he and his employer had to make some adjustments. I use my hands a lot in, in every field that I've been employed in or, or working for myself. So my only barrier was, it was in fact, my hand motion, the, the limited hand strength early on. So it took some time to get used to relying more on one hand with some physical therapy and using my hand on a regular basis. It healed quite quickly. Ben returned to work faster than most burn injury patients even though his employer wasn't sure Ben was ready. 
a patient would say, my employer said he wants me to come back when I'm 100%. And I think that is the biggest mistake an employer can make. Ask your employer, do you have something that I can do? Can I go back to work part-time? Could I do just this part of my job and maybe within two weeks I'll be able to, uh, to do the rest? The key for both employers and employees is flexibility and figuring out ways to help the worker adapt. They can start at four hours a day. They could then transition to six hours a day. If you have a patient who is an outdoor worker and is going to be exposed to the environment, many of our patients may have sensitivity to heat or to cold. Or if you're a kitchen worker and you're constantly at the stove, you might be sensitive to the extreme temperatures and so there may need to be some adjustments. A lot of patients are burned on the job with that, uh, whether in industrial area, electricians, and those kind of injuries happen on the job. And then it's really a transition back to the workplace where they were hurt and back to the same job or a different job but in the same environment. And all the psychological issues that go with that about uh, being afraid to return to work. No matter where the patient was injured, many continue to contend with psychological issues. I think the biggest misunderstanding that, that patients have about returning to work is that they're going to be completely healed and have no psychological symptoms of depression or PTSD or anxiety before returning to work. And I think patients are often surprised that we're making recommendations that they return to work may, when maybe they still are wearing splints or pressure garments or bandages or have symptoms of PTSD or depression. Good. Good. Fair 2013. When in fact, returning to work is one of the best cures for those things. Early on, we focus on the physical issues so much, but at some point it's more the psychological issues and uh, sometimes counseling, psychological support is really what's needed at that time to get somebody back to work. Once back on the job, it takes time for patients with visible burn injuries to adjust to how others see them. I'll be walking around a store and I'll notice somebody staring at me and uh, usually a young inquisitive kid. And, um, and so at first you, you think, what are they looking at? I think the hardest thing about returning to work as a new burn survivor is dealing with people who are staring at you or who may have questions and who may approach you somewhat rudely with their questions. One of our first steps is to help them be comfortable with their change in appearance and kind of this new normal that they might have to face. And we really work with patients on directing the conversation of how they want it to go. Somebody says, hey, it's glad to have you back. Um, what happened to you? A lot of times uh, we teach them to say, you know, I was burned, um, but now I'm fine. How are your kids? How are things going for you? And just direct the conversation back to them. There is a sense by many people that with a burn injury you are permanently disabled. The remarkable thing about humans is that we are very adaptable. My mantra when I talk to patients is the more you do, the more you're going to be able to do. I'm excited about the prospect of going back to work. I can't wait to go back and see uh, my colleagues, the folks who I work with, who, who are one of the great reasons why I love my job, because we all work so well together, and I can't wait to see my students again. Folks at Harborview saved my life. I felt looked after like I was more of a family member than, a, than a, another patient with a number. The beginning, it took a while. It was scary at times. We almost lost them a couple times. There was a time uh, during the recovery process that uh, I was kind of getting the woe is me attitude and my best friend had come by the hospital and could see that I was, that I was having a tough time with it, kind of saying, you know, I, I was this outgoing, adventurous, uh, free-spirited guy and, and now that's all changed and my best friend sat down across from me and he said, it hasn't changed. It's only changed if, if you want it to change. Just. Uh, a light switch being turned on and hey there's no there's no other choice here. Burn injury model systems provide coordinated and multidisciplinary rehabilitation care 
and conduct research to improve care and outcomes for individuals with burn injury. This video is a product of the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center and funded by the National Institute on Disability and Rehabilitation Research. To learn more about the work of the Burn Injury Model Systems, go to msktc.org.